the lens is yellow. You even have the broken lenses and broken surrounds, less prone to attracting bugs. And in Texas, we have plenty of those. Now you have a nice tapered surface there. You wanna make sure to always countersink the whole. Today we're gonna to be removing these courtesy lights out of our boat and replacing them with nice new ones with the chrome bezel and LED lights. Um, these are traditional um, late 90s, early 2000s, I think uh, even used into the 2010 era on some boats. Various manufacturers have used them over the years. Um, the lens is yellow and the white surround that you see there is uh, not very attractive and they're not terribly bright either. And some of these in the boat that we're working on even have the broken lenses and broken surrounds, so it's definitely time to get them replaced. These are the newer units. Um, as you can tell, the LED lights are built in and it's a flush mount on the back. Uh, all you have is the wire coming out, so you need the hole in the middle. If you're mounting these anywhere that you don't have a light, uh, you literally just need a hole and uh, the two screw holes on either end to be able to mount them. We're gonna be replacing these. So we already have a hole. Uh, we may have to drill new uh, pilot holes for the screws to go in and that should be it. And we'll be able to use the same wires. So once you get the, the lens off, the four screws off for the old light, you typically have a plug uh, on the back side with the wiring. If you do, disconnect that. Make sure you have enough slack here to hold the wire out of the hole. If you don't and it keeps wanting to pull back in, uh, tie uh, some electric tape around it and tape it down to your gel coat to make sure it stays put and the wire doesn't get sucked back into the hole. And now what we're gonna do is cut this pigtail here since we're not gonna be using the old light and I wanna continue using the uh, connector and, and the pigtail here and we're just gonna connect some new lines onto this. So I'm gonna cut it here and then use that length to connect our new wires onto. All right, I've got my connector cut off of the old light. Um, I took a little bit of the wire sheeting off um, and exposed some of the bare wire. And then we're gonna use these to crimp onto the new connectors. I'm gonna use these heat shrink splice butt connectors. Um, you put this over your bare wire on one side and you can see the uh, little split in the middle there where it'll block the wire from going in too far so that you have enough room for the other wire to go in. And then once you get it in, you hold it in place and you use a crimp tool to crimp it down on this side. And then the other side, the wire you put in there, you use the crimp tool to crimp down that side. And then once you've got everything crimped on, you use either a heat gun or a torch. Um, even a kitchen torch is what I like to use because they're small uh, and they don't put out too much heat and you can focus it in certain areas without having the heat um, burn things uh, that are outside of the, the heat shrink section. So um, I'm gonna crimp down this side and I'm gonna connect the wires from the new LED light to this side, crimp that down, uh, get both the ground and the power wires crimped on. And then lastly, I'm going to put some heat on either end of both connectors and uh, shrink it down so that we have a nice, good watertight connection. This is the crimper I'm using. Um, I'll put the links for this crimper, the heat shrink, butt splice connectors, and even the LED lights down in the description underneath the video. So if you want these specific parts, make sure to use the links down in the description. It'll take you directly to the parts on Amazon uh, or eBay or anywhere else they're available, and you can purchase them directly from there. So this is a ratcheting spring-loaded splicer. You can see it stays in place. It'll allow you to get nice good pressure on there and then it releases. Um, what I like to do is go back on the crimp twice and make sure I've got good contact and good pressure on the crimp uh, so that the wires stay in place and then move on to the next one. So you put the connector, the crimp connector, onto the end of the wire. You can see that the bare section of the wire is in there. And then once you do that, apologies, I'm doing this with one hand, then you'll put the crimp connector into the correct slot in the crimping tool. And then once you've got it in there, you put down pressure on there. You can crimp it once, twice, three times, and make sure that you've got enough pressure on there and you're done. 
Um, if you see here, you've got a red color dot, a blue color dot, and a yellow color dot. These crimp uh, connectors come generally in red or pink, uh, blue, and then yellow for different gauge wire, different thicknesses of wire. Um, so whichever color connector you're using for the size wire you have, you want to make sure to use the right slot. Now I've got the two crimp splice butt connectors crimped down onto the wires from the pigtail. Next thing I'm going to do is take the wire leads from the new LED light and crimp them down on the other side. I've got all the wires crimped together. So I went ahead and applied heat to one of the connectors, this one here on the black wire. And you can see that the ends shrunk and wrapped nice and tightly around the wire, creating a much more firm connection, uh, less prone to pulling out and uh, less prone to moisture getting in. Whereas the other connector still has the ends open and has not uh, been shrunk yet. So that's the difference there, make sure use the heat shrink connectors and once you get them on make sure you apply heat to shrink down the ends. We've got both splices done. Um, applied heat to the butt splice connectors and got them all sealed up. Next thing we're gonna do is get the pigtail plugged in and then fit the light up, mark the holes and drill the new holes. So as you can see I drilled the top hole here for my mounting of the new LED light and that's a normal hole I drilled very gently go slowly so you don't chip the gel coat but I'm not going to leave it at that the next thing you want to do is use a countersink bit this is one type of countersink bit you also have abrasive countersink bits that are more uh, like a gritty material that uh, is like a stone that's shaped um, like so but but in a stone abrasive material this one is a metal tool that's more like a drill bit and cuts but uh, either way you want to use a countersink bit on the hole so that you have um, a nice gradual um, exit from the hole to your screw otherwise you get what people typically see as spider web cracks spider cracks throughout their gel coat that uh, extend out from holes that have been drilled out uh, in their boat for various uh, accessories and such. You can see the OEM holes are actually not countersunk. Um, I'm glad these didn't spider crack, but um, that's probably because it's just a, a light and there's not much tension on those holes as far as what it's holding in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and countersink the holes that I drill. That way there's no chance of them having any sort of cracking in the gel coat going forward. So you can see the hole in the middle is still the same size, but now you have a nice tapered surface there that won't put any sort of pressure on the lip of the hole when you're tightening in your screw. You want to do that on any sort of hole you drill into your boat to mount anything. Transducers in the back on the transom, underwater lights, speakers, speaker grills, anything at all. You want to make sure to always countersink the holes that you drill. All right, we're all done. We've got everything screwed in. Both holes are countersunk and uh, we've got light. That means our wiring is correct. You want to make sure to get the positive and the negative correct for LED lights. Most of them are pole sensitive. And if you notice, I've got an amber light in here. Um, I know most people go with fancy colors like the bright, super white or the blue um, or the greens. Uh, I like amber or red for the interior of a boat because they're less prone to attracting bugs and mosquitoes and in Texas we have plenty of those. So if you do want to avoid getting bugs attracted to your boat in the evenings go with amber or red for your LED light colors. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below and See you next time.